Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to check out a Legendary Hero mod. You see, this is a very good collaboration by some very well-known modders at this point. Stratovarius, Dead Baron, Not So Skelly Bones, and Karma. And they've decided to bring in a rather loved character from Warhammer Fantasy. So loved that he keeps getting new models, even in Blood Bowl. It's one of those things where you'd think he's not that popular, but he actually really is. This is Scylla and Fingrim, a Chaos Spawn of of corn, which still retains a little bit of his intelligence, not a lot, but he's a very powerful monster, and he was very much loved back in the day, mostly because, well, he is a unique looking chaos spawn, and he reminds everyone of a monkey, let's be honest. This character himself is available to you in custom battles and campaign when you're playing as Scarbrand, and as you can see, pretty decent stats all around. He's also got access to armor piercing, he's a melee expert, he's unbreakable because, you know, he is a Chaos Spawn, and it brings a lot of potential here. We're going to be looking at all his unique stuff soon, but the idea is he just looks so good. He looks so good. It's one of those models where I just first saw and I was like, wow. And it just proves that even some basic reskinning here and there can do a lot because the base sign, as you can imagine, is a rat ogre. And I think it's just incredibly impressive. You'll get access to Scylla as soon as you begin your campaign, though he won't have any movement, so you'll have to wait a turn before you can actually bring him into an army. However, that's not too much of an issue. I think it's just a scripting thing. But he plays the role of a legendary hero, so as you can see, if he dies, he'll come back. There's no need to level up an immortality trait or anything. And we've got access to a few different things. Generically, he'll work with the whole stuff about giving XP to your troops, uh, you know, assaulting garrison, spreading control, all the basic stuff. But you want him in combat, don't you? Because at the end of the day, this is a cornate character, you want him in combat, and he's got all the usual stuff like kill, maim, burn, destroy, slaughter, he's there just to get stronger and stronger and stronger, and he can really get some decent stats as you start leveling him up. Scylla has his own unique trait, which is named after himself, and that's the Brass Call of Corn, which basically is pretty good because overall it's a massive increase to spell resistance and obviously some damage resistance too. This is further buffed up by other means, so he's going to be quite good. He's very baseline with every other thing that's Cornate, which is already spell resistant anyway because, well, you know, it's corn. How it works is that Brass Callers themselves are what helps them to withstand loads of magical attacks. Scylla does have access to his own unique skill line, which is pretty good. He can reduce the enemy melee defense through an area via a passive ability, though it does make him susceptible to Rampage, keep that in mind. And there's a few other things, you know, like increasing spell resistance, getting stronger with, say, more kills. That's just the usual sort of the weak stuff being able to pick up more skulls, either as an agent or with an army, which I think is very, very useful because obviously, you know, skulls are so important. You've also got access to Harvest of Souls, which will allow you to replenish some HP. I think that's quite nice. It's a snashy thing, but it fits really, really well with him and obviously just increasing the abilities of the Chaos Spawn of Corn, which, yes, might not sound really cool, because I know a lot of people don't like Spawn, but the idea is, you know, you can theme an army, extra melee attack, weapon strength, it makes them even stronger. I'm a big fan of Chaos Spawn as it stands, not even just in the games, but also the tabletop. I've always kind of liked Chaos Spawn, because, uh, let's be honest, they're a bit of a meme, but uh, it's just how it is. But all in all, the skill line is very, very good. I'm cycling right through it, and you can see everything there. You've also got access to some Locusts too, so you can get some decent buffs buffs as it stands, and also some buffs towards your blood host creation in case you're using them. And honestly, I'm really, really impressed because it's something that would be simple in terms of skills, but just done very, very well. So I'm going to show off a custom battle here where I've got a randomly generated Nurgle army and funny enough, a randomly generated corn army. I just had to switch out one unit so I could fit in Scylla. And I think it works out quite well because it's got a little chaos spawn and that's pretty much what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a bit of a theme army. It works out really well. He's a melee character. He's good at like doing a lot of damage. I must say that he's pretty decent at a lot of things. I was able to use him quite well to take out some characters because I was using him in a campaign. I really enjoy the Cornate campaign. Scarbrand is just so much fun. But with a little bit of extra flavor with some mods, it makes it a little bit more fun because, you know, replayability and all that. And it was interesting. In campaign, I was running a Herald. So just a Herald. I didn't turn him into a Exalted Bloodthirster. And I had Scylla and then 18 other Chaos Spawn units. I thought that was kind of fun. It's not the best way to go. 
Um, maybe as a supporting army, maybe, but I would say that you would need some other stuff to mix around. Though it does work out quite well if you start using all the technology to upgrade the Chaos Spawn, if you get the skill points to upgrade the Chaos Spawn too, you can make them a bit better. As always, you know, it's better to just mix and match, especially with the Cornate Forces, you've got so many different things that work so differently. You've got the Chaos Warriors, which are quite tanky, you've got all the Skull Crushers and Blood Crushers, but I must say, in general, I had a lot of fun. I think the character looks absolutely awesome. There's a few frame drops in this, but I think uh, it's the map. It's very, very strange how some maps have better frame rate than others. But let's not distract with that. It's more of the case of, like, that's a really cool character. I really enjoy the character from Warhammer Fantasy 8th Edition. It's a character that I would never really see leading an army, so I don't think he would be a DLC or FLC lord. But as a legendary hero officially later down the line, yeah, I think it could work out quite well. Which is why I'm a big fan of these modders and this interpretation because, yeah, it's cool. He looks awesome. I think that's really, really important. So the mod can be found in the description below and I would recommend trying it out if you want to play Scarbrand again. Mainly because, well, Scarbrand has one of the best campaigns when it comes to Warhammer 3 at the moment. It's quite fun. It's just like hack and slash and now you have another character to hack and slash with. So, yeah, I mean, what are you waiting for? I'm gonna let the rest of the battle play out so you can see how it goes. And before anyone says anything, the reason why I decided to fight Nurgle here was because, you know, you've got the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. It's just kind of themes well. Plus, it's always fun to fight Nurgle. But with all that being said, I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Hey! 